I'm an artist and I'm interested particularly in the figure and in abstraction. It's a strange occupation being a painter. The studio I have, I've been there for coming up for two years. It's down in my favourite part of the island, which is the harbour. It's a quite an industrial, working class area. I was brought up at the back of where I am now, and I used to explore the harbour and go looking for stuff in the mud and everything. The location doesn't impact the work, other than I feel like I'm in an in a working area, which is quite important to me. I could be in the middle of New York in my studio and you wouldn't really know the difference. Essentially what most painting does is it slows time. And we're living through a period where everything's so fast and the accumulation of imagery that everyone sees, not even on a daily basis, but by the hour, people barely have time to draw breath before we've moved on to the next thing. I tend not to work directly from images that are in any way connected personally to me. So I have to go through a period of time of accepting that image of it as mine. So it will come from a very disparate source. The word utopia is at the forefront of my mind slash dystopia, because I, I've become increasingly aware through the research that I'm doing, they're one and the same thing. I went through a bit of a phase of listening to all the new atheist movement of all the, the four horsemen, as they're called. And I also am fascinated by Pentecostal baptisms and why people are prepared to believe what they believe and what they're prepared to do to carry out those beliefs. As the work developed, I think I became a lot more open-minded in my own reactions to how they go about living their lives with the beliefs they have. So I became a lot more accepting of that, I think, as it went on. All I'm doing is I'm exploring subject matter that I'm interested in, and then I hope the paintings transcend the concept and they become objects in their own right. So whether you know they're about utopias or not, they're still going to engage you and have a resonance for people in some way. I tend to grid up the image that I'm working from. I go straight in with paint. I tend not to draw it out first or do any sketches or anything. I just I want to live with the painting and I want to see it kind of develop in its own time. Depending on what I'm working on, I'll use all sorts of different kinds of paint. So when you're using really good quality pigment, you can feel the quality. Even when you hold the tube in your hand, it's heavier. It's just got that physicality to it. I tend to work on many paintings at the same time. For my last exhibition, I had anything between 12 to 50, 60 on the go. That doesn't mean they all worked. I mean, maybe 10 out of those 50 might work. I get to listen to whatever I want every day. If I want to educate myself about specific things, I can. I listen to a lot of American stand-up, going back to like the greats like Bill Hicks and George Carlin to modern day stand-ups like Joe Rogan. Uh, he covers so many bases and it's such an open-minded program. I'm a kind of a big fan of listening to Carl Pilkington and Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, because it's just inane nonsense, but it's hilarious. That's quite good for me sometimes with the work because it tends to take me out if I'm getting too intense with it. I'm very aware of the fact that I'm almost removed from reality in many ways when I'm working. But at the same time, if anything, it's more real than the world I, I would have been living in had I, for example, been in an office every day. So I tend to, at the end of each day, scrape up any paint that's left and I'll either put them on some small paintings so that the layers build up and then I decide what I'm going to do with them. Or I add them to these three, they, they're becoming like sculptures. At the minute I've got a taxidermied crow sitting on one of them. They're like little towers of Babel to me. One of the reasons I work on a number of different paintings at the same time is it stops the chances of me overworking. The painting might not have anywhere near the amount of attention to detail or virtuoso type painting, but it might be saying something more than any of that could ever do. 
that's the main challenge. It's knowing when enough is enough. I'm never sad to see a painting go because I'm already working on new work, even if it's just in my head. It means you can be ruthless about it and you never accept what you've just done is the best thing you're going to do.